Hi, today we're gonna continue working with nested assets and expand their functionality even further. We're gonna utilize reorderable list to be able to add new childs or delete existing with a plus and minus buttons and add the ability to rename childs. We're left off at the point where we have two buttons to create child and delete child. I'll start with a minor refactoring First of all, our child's array, or rather list, is public. It's not really good way. So I'm gonna make it private. For private variables, I use convention with underscore. But now, as you can see in editor, we cannot access this private variable. So the workaround is to make a public variable, which can reference private variable. I'm gonna call it a little bit weird. But well it will do the job. And here I'm just gonna use regular name of for the childs. And also this should only existing editor. So we're gonna wrap it with a definition if you need the editor. Now here we should remove name of and use our newly created variable child's prop name. As you can see everything still works. Now, these buttons are cool, of course, but our reorderable list have almost the same buttons as well. So we're gonna use its controls to delete or add a new child. And in future also rename our existed child. So I'll start with commenting out all this code and we should create reorderable list. I'm just gonna call it reorderable list. It should be created in on enable. This method executes when you select something in an expector. So it accepts a lot of different parameters, but I'm gonna use this overload with serialized object, serialized property for our child, and some other flags to control its behavior. So serialized object is gonna be our expected, inspected serialized object. Elements, we're getting it in on inside GUI, but it's better if we move it in outer scope. And now we can pass our child's here. So, draggable, display header, display add button, display remove button. Actually, we need all of this stuff, so I'm just gonna leave it empty. It defaults by true. So, now we need to render our renderable list. It has two methods for this, do list and do layout list. Do list is used for property drawing. If you have desired area or rect to draw within, but we're just gonna use do layout list. It will execute as a regular layout code. Yep, there it is. So, Pressing this button doesn't actually add new childs. It don't even render them. It renders just the labels of element with indexes. So for this, we need to hook up some callbacks in reorderable list.
first of all is on add callback. I will make a separate method for this. This callback executes almost the same as create child. So I'm just gonna pass this code here. And update our child's name. Yep, there we go. We have our child. But if we delete them, nothing really happens. Earlier we were getting our child by this array size minus one, which means the last child. And so we can delete on the last child. But with reorderable list, we can select childs. And so we should delete selected child. For child deletion, we also have a callback. On remove callback. I'll also create a separate method for this. So here we need to use our delete child, but we'll pass an object. So I'm going to make a little different parameter with the int and it will be just an index. And here we're going to call delete child with a list index. Index represents the current selected child. So now here we need to get our child by this index. Also, in previous way, we decrease in array size, which means deleting the last element. But now we cannot do that. This element can be anywhere inside of list. So we'll use child's delete array element at index. Now let's head back to Unity. Recreate object. Try to add a new child. It's working. Now try to remove last child. It also working, but it's not updates. Well, it cannot be null. It happens because the literary element it index only deletes reference for the first time and then deletes the element. So if we already have a reference it just make it null but the element still in the list. So we're gonna use get array element one more time and set our object reference value to null manually. Now let's again recreate the object. It creates new childs and if you delete it, it deletes. Now I'm gonna implement child renaming. As you can see, it's not quite rendering well right now. It just renders label. But we need our child reference or rather our child's name. So we can rename our just nested asset to something else. For rendering childs, we list have another callback. Draw element callback. I'm gonna create another separate method for this. It has a bunch of parameters. 
Uh, so let's see what renders now. It's just empty boxes, which we can select. Uh, for rendering, we need our child to have a name property. So in nested asset, I'm going to make a private string with editor name and also a static accessor for its path. Now here in nested asset parent we can render this name but it's a little bit tricky. First of all we need to create a serialized object out of our scriptable object child. And we can get a child out of the child's array with the index of this index. <laughs> its index represents the child currently rendering. Now, in serialized object, we can get our child name, editor name, it will be serialized property, with the child find property, and the static property of editor name drop name. Uh, also before rendering our name I'm gonna use the same methods we used before for updating our serialized object but now it's child update and child apply modified properties. So now to the rendering. I will use editor GUI property field with the position of this rect passed by our callback and this property. Oh sure, it should be serialized field and also I'll put a delayed attribute for renaming purposes. Now it renders almost correctly, just a little back when this string field is too big. It can be fixed pretty easy. I'm just gonna modify this rect. by single line height now it's almost correct I just need to offset it a little bit lower in GUI coordinates lower is actually Y plus so the lower you need to draw the higher Y value you should have. So I'm gonna add about two units for this. And now it's pretty good. Also it renders our child name with the label of editor name. I'm gonna modify it by a little bit and pass custom label. In this label I'm just gonna draw a child 
with corresponding index. Yep, there we go. Now to the child's renaming. We have our editor name fields. We can write anything we want here. It will save, but child name not actually changes. First of all, we don't need this editor name display in nested asset editor. So I'm just gonna make add attribute hide in inspector. And for renaming, we should check is our applied modified property returns true. It returns billion whether the chain is appears or object is has or object has the same state as before. So if we change our name, we should check if this change is actually in the name. So if child name doesn't equals our child name string value, changing name is actually occurs. And then we should change our object name with a new name of same child string value and also save our assets. For test purposes, I'm gonna recreate object and add a new child with an empty name. If we pass some text here, our name here is also updated. As well as in this child. For clear behavior, when we add a new child, it already had a name, but its field is empty. So I'm just gonna create our child's with the default name. Name of our uh, of our type. Now default name will correspond the actual created object name and then we can rename it. And so now we can test our deletion. I'm gonna select the second child and if we delete it, second is deleted and also first and third one is left here. <laughs> 